Welcome back. And now it's now time to talk about the things that happened many, many years ago today in history, the 27th of January. And I'm going back to the year 2002 in what is on record to be one of Nigeria's worst disasters. It is a morning that, well, actually an evening that shook Nigeria entirely after, um, and of course, it was popularly known as the Keja Cantonment Bomb Blast. It happened today in 2002, and it started with a fire in a market that was right next to uh, a military storage facility in uh, Ikeja right there. Much later in the evening, sometime around 6 p.m., that was when the fire then extended to the storage facility and the explosion started. Um, it is um, on record, of course, for people who were you know, alive in that time and who have lived through that era, it's a, it's a time that many, many would never forget and would continue to, of course, uh, be in the memories of Nigerians for many, many years. Um, approximately about 300 people were reportedly killed when the explosions took place, but that wasn't really where uh, the major disaster even happened. The explosions took place, there was a lot of uh, shrapnel that was thrown into the air, bombs and the likes were thrown in the air. And um, the, the saddest part of it was recording that about 600 to 1,000 people that died after they drowned in the canal right next to uh, the um, uh, cantonment. Um, the um, uh, United uh, well, Red Cross rather reported about 1,100 dead um, after that incident, but of course many, many were still injured and still missing. It also says that about 20,000 people were rendered homeless after this incident. And, um, you know, of course, I, I'm, I'm guessing till date there are still people who suffer or are still, um, you know, suffering from that particular incident. Unfortunately, just like every other Nigerian story or disaster like this, there's never really any person who takes responsibility for that failure and is uh, sent to jail or is demoted or is sacked or is fired. And, um, you know, it has continued to be, you know, this, you know, very, very same reaction that we have to a failure of, uh, of people to, you know, play their role and to, you know, do what is expected of them when they have certain positions. The uh, president, then Ulushengo Basinger, did visit the scene the next day. And of course, um, ask questions. The Nigerians also ask questions across the country about whose failure was responsible for uh, leaving those bombs and those um, um, highly explosive devices in, you know, a residential area. But till date, you know, I don't, I don't remember that there has been anybody who has been made to, um, you know, pay for that um, disaster. It uh, was an explosion that extended more than 50 kilometers from where it occurred. About 15 kilometers from there, windows were shattered, glasses, you know, across, you know, that area, 15 kilometers, you know, away from it, were affected, basically. I remember that day so clearly. Oh, I do. I was, I was only a child. I was at Alagbado. It was so far, it's so far from Ikeja, but I remember hearing the sound of that bomb blast. It was a horror. I can remember our neighbors, as far as that place was, Alagbado from Ikeja, people were packing their stuff and running. Everyone, I think a lot of people felt it was um, maybe a, a war that had started or a terrorist attack or, there was you know, panic. The, nobody was sure. And that is why it is, is, it is extremely sad seeing that a lot of the people that died, these numbers that we're talking about, 1,100 and even more that, you know, were still missing, a lot of them died not from the bomb blast itself or, you know, or, but from, or not from the explosion itself, but from running into the canal that was covered with, you know, hyacinth. Um, a lot of them, of course, couldn't swim. They panicked and were running for, you know, their lives and just ran straight into the water. Um, it also, if you look at the report, it also says that many people were trampled upon in the water. So even if you had maybe thought that you might swim or survive, when there's dozens of other people pouring into that same water, you know, the, the chances are less. And, and hundreds and hundreds of bodies were pulled out of the canal up to 10 kilometers away um, um, the, the next and the days, you know, after. It's a mm. really, really sad moment in Nigeria's um, history. Fear really is a powerful killer. On its and own. I'm going to also, you know, say this. If you remember last year, I believe, the bomb explosion, the explosion in Lebanon, yeah, that right, yes. leveled kilometers, you know, around there. Um, if you see the reaction, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that people did resign. I think cabinet resigned. Or, yes, you know, there, was, yes. there was definitely people who took responsibility for that failure that led to, you know, that um, um, explosion and, of course, the loss of lives and property uh, there. But in Nigeria, the story is different. 
So sad. And what's even more saddening is that 15 years after that bomb blast, that was in 2017, people came out victims, people who had lost their families, lost people, people who were missing. They came out to say that the government promised them compensation, gave them 250,000 naira, and said this was just a relief package. They were going to compensate them properly. But they never heard anything from the government. It's just so sad that nobody took responsibility and the appropriate compensation, which should be the list that could be done for those families, you know, were never yeah, we done. Sad. So sad. Another sad story, 1978, January 27th. It was a story of four murders. This guy, Richard Chase, who came to be known as the Dracula Killer, killed four people this day. What he does basically is just... It was a mental illness because they found out that he was, you know, even though, you know, doctors and the jury eventually argued that he was sane, he was in his right mind when he was doing this, but there were also, you know, traces of him being narcotic, basically, and having hallucinations. He was taking drugs that induced hallucinations, and he would say he heard voices that the Nazis told him to do certain things and that unidentified flying objects, UFOs, were following him and that he felt that he didn't have a stomach, he felt that his, his brains were falling out of his head. He just said so many weird things. He said voices would tell him that uh, his blood was drying out and turning into powder, so and that he needed, needed to more. drink people's blood so that he can be okay. He killed babies. He, he was just insane. My God, he eventually died in prison uh, on, on, on a drug overdose. And uh, that's what happened today in history, 1978, January 27th. Richard Chase, known as the Dracula murder, um, Dracula killer, murdered uh, four people, including a six-year-old uh, boy. It is weird, you know, that... Um, and I don't know if we have gotten to that stage where, you know, people can plead um, a mental illness in Nigerian courts yet. I don't, I don't think we're there yet. I don't think that, you know, that plea goes anywhere. You know, where people can say, oh, you know, or, or you know, defense lawyers can say my client, you know, is... Uh, yeah, isn't safe. Yeah, isn't, yeah, but yeah, Richard didn't stable. get off um, on that, on that uh, claim. He didn't get off on that claim. Because and, you know, I also, I also remember uh, a few years ago when I read uh, the novel or the collection... Dracula. Uh, no, no, not Dracula. Uh, Dracula, uh, Dracula Dracula, Dracula, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Not Dracula now, the um, Vampire Chronicles oh, by yes. Anne Rice. It's a, it's a collection of books, about six or seven of them. Uh, the Tale of the Body Thief, The Vampire List, Start, Our Man. There's so many of them. Um, and there was that moment where I, I thought to myself, it might be interesting being a vampire. Um, I didn't get as far as Honestly, wanting to drink Honestly, I've blood. thought about that well, too. I'm sure lots of people did when they watched all these vampire movies, like, why not somebody suck my blood? But please no, no, don't I, do that. I never, <laughs> thought, <laughs> I never thought about drinking anyone's blood. Okay, you no, know no, what? no, 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 not, not people drinking my blood, not me. The, blood. the no, excitement no. <laughs> for me was, was the character list that who uh, was someone who had lived for thousands of years, you know, and had money that was just never ending. You know, he, he wasn't even sure how much money he had, but he was just extremely rich. And he had powers as a vampire to continue to live, you know, with the same face, the same features. He, was, he never grew old. He remained the same person for thousands of years, and he could appear in any part of the world at any time that he mm -hmm. wanted. Um, and that's what I, I, I felt like I should have. For All me. right. So but anyway, um, <laughs> Richard, Richard Chase's um, case was very unique because even till now, the FBI still uses his case as a model to understand and study disorganized murders because his, his murders were very disorganized. He would go there, he would, you know, it's not like those serial killers who would be very meticulous. They would make sure that nobody catches them. You're, you know, people that can be very, very you know, meticulous about planning. Yes. He just goes into people's houses, he carries the baby, he leaves blood everywhere. He was just very disorganized and anyway, he was eventually caught and sentenced. <laughs> Ooh, that's it today. 1978 and 2002, two very sad stories. But anyway, uh, it happened today in history. I will always like to say, uh, do what you can to make history, you know, so Not that we can talk about way, you. Please. Obviously, don't drink anyone's blood. <laughs> so we can talk about you sometime on the program in the future. Uh, stay with us. We have more of these very interesting conversations coming your way. We're uh, moving next to talk about Sunday Go's house um, that was burnt. How does this affect the peace uh, negotiations, the discussions in the Southwest with regards to the head headers and farmers' clashes, and uh, what comes next for him? Stay with us.